Hi everybody and welcome to our show. We call it PA Harness Week and we got action for you personified today. The Mildred Williams Driving Series is going to take place. What is that? It's a terrific thing for breast cancer research, right? Yes, that's okay. right. That's, right. that's important. We're going to have some great races from Pocono Downs. George Napolitano is literally on fire. We'll hear all about that. And the yeah. Red Mile yeah. has that great meet they have every year at this time. We'll cover some of the best races in the country. So let's kick off the action. Heather's got the race from Harris Chester. It was race six on Monday. Yes, we have a field of fillies and mares in here. Check out Lisa Trip, the favorite, with Dan Dubay. Dingle Bay is, <laughs> is named after a body of water in Ireland, in case you decided to Google <laughs> Dingle Bay like I did last night. And Kelly Tech Sophie was second in this class last time out. Arbito is set immediately for the front from the extreme outside, and she will cross and clear in the first 150 yards. Arbito leads by a length and three quarters from Kelly Tuck Sophie at the outside of Alice's Restaurant. These two also showed speed, and this front group is four lengths in front of Life's a Trip in fourth. It's two more to Dingle Bay, a rated fifth. He's already eight and a half lengths off the leaders. Next in line is Eagle C, followed by Survey Hanover. And a length and three quarters last is Chinatown K through a 27 2 first quarter. Coming past us the first time, Arbito at 59 to 1. The longest shot on the board has cleared Kelly Tuck Sophie. Alice's Restaurant is a closer third, and life's a trip. Life's a trip comes alive from fourth. She moves to the outside, and she's tracked by Dingle Bay into the bridge turn. Eagle C floats third over. She's six and a half lengths from the lead. Sort of Bay Hanover shoots the gap, leaving a break of five to trailer Chinatown K. And the half was a controlled 56 and 1. Up the back stretch, it's Arbito. Arbito leads by just a length. Life's a trip is coming to her on the outside. Kelly Tuck Sophie is locked in the box. Dingle Bay is carried up second over. She's two lengths off the leading duo. Alice's Restaurant, Red Blinkers, she needs racing room. Wide of that is Eagle C. Sort of a Hanover comes off the cones with six lengths to find. And the distant trailer, six and a half last is Chinatown K. Three quarters in, 123 and four. Approaching head stretch, Arbito is trying to see it through. Life's a trip, only a half length away on the outside. And Dingle Bay comes off cover. Kelly Tuck Sophie moves to the open stretch, and Arbito's been gathered in. Life's a trip strikes the front. Kelly Tuck Sophie driving up the open stretch. Dingle Bay in the wide outside. Here's the line. Kelly Tuck Sophie. Kelly Tuck Sophie wins in 152 and 2 with Jonathan Roberts in the bike. The 28 year old gets the job done and pays $11 to win. Life's a trip was second, and Dingle Bay picked up third. Now, the winning driver, again, is Jonathan Roberts. And we haven't had him on the show. We haven't really learned about. What makes Jonathan Roberts tick? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's meet him now. We're here with a real SOB, folks. And the SOB in this situation stands for Son of Bib. <laughs> I got you with that, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. Jonathan Roberts, who is an up-and-coming driver and a third-generation horseman. Jonathan, tell us a little bit about your past. I mean, your dad, I know your dad was a terrific driver. Um, is that how you got in the business? Pretty much, yeah. Uh, you know, I was around racing pretty much my entire life, you know, with dad racing and whatnot. And uh, it just sort of came natural that way. Remember the old Liberty Bell days in Brandywine? Can you remember back that far? No, I think that was before my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really hurts, you know. <laughs> Tell us about your grandfather, who really started in the business. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was from North Carolina. Uh, he used to ship up and race at Liberty Bell and Brandywine and whatnot. And uh, that's how my dad got started. He started when he was 18 and moved up to Free State and Rosecroft and around this area and Liberty Bell and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I just sort of came into it after that. All right, this is important. It always said in the program for your dad, W... Bib Roberts. What's the W stand for? William. 
It's William. Yep. And wh- how do you get the name Bib? You know, I'm really not that sure on that story either. It apparently came from his childhood, and his mother, I think, believe gave him that name. But I, I haven't really got the whole story out of her yet either. That's great. You're doing well here at Harris Chester, and uh, it's a, it's a heck of a driver colony to compete against, isn't it? Oh, there's some phenomenal drivers here. You know, just be grateful that the trainers give you an opportunity to race here. There's some very good trainers, very good horses, and high purses. So it's a great place to be. Okay, next up at Harris Chester, race 10 on Monday. It was the feature race. It was a $33,000 heat for classy trotters. How classy? Non one is at 37.5 in the last five starts. Number six, Sunland Dakota with Tim Tietrich was the 8 to 5 chalk. Number one, Bet to Win with Double D Dan Dubay went off at 2 to 1. And number four, Chosen Voyager was the 7 to 2 third choice. And with that call, here's James. Chosen Voyager in front running fashion leads them to the bridge turn. And he is a length and a half in front of Diana Hall. Bet to win continues to stalk from third. Sunland Dakota has yet to see the cones. Parked by Man About Town, who claims fourth outright. Zito Mira is to the outside, and she is seven and a half from the front. Darcel is saving ground, and Mac Dean Star is a wide last. The half 56 and four. Three eighths to go for Chosen Voyager, a length and a half in front, tracked every step by Diana Hall. And now here comes Bet to Win to the outside. Bet to Win is up within a half length of the lead. Sunland Dakota has three lengths to make up, reclaiming fourth. Zito Mira is in the clear and still five and a half behind. Man About Town is gapped at the cones. Then comes Mac Dean Star at the outside of Trailer Star Cell. Three quarters in, 125 flat. They turn for home, and it's Bet to Win caught wide every step of that far turn. And and bet to win leads by a half length. Chosen Voyager is under pressure. Two lengths back to Diana Hall. Zito Mira is gaining down the center, but it's bet to win. Tim Tietrick got a brutal trip on the favorite. Got hung out to drive by Tony Palacino, who refused to give him a seat, and thusly he was cooked. Anyway, Chosen Voyager cut the mile, finally got worn down by bet to win, who, if you bet to win, you won. Chosen Voyager lived for second. Diana Hall off at 8 to 1 with Yannick Jingra was third and now we're going to go down to Sonny the paddock judge and this is a very interesting segment because Sonny's going to talk about whips it's one of my favorite subjects and Sonny has some rules governing the use of whips that may not align with my usage or yours I'm not going there <laughs> but let's find out from Sonny what he's got to say about whips mm -hmm. thanks guys I'm here today with Corey Callahan one of our dr regular drivers here at Harris Chester we're going to talk about the whips, the whipping rule, how it's changed, and what the difference and when you can whip and when you can't. Corey, tell us a little bit about the whipping rule, changes, when you can whip. Yeah, I mean, changes to the, uh, well, we can first talk about the whip itself. I mean, the whip is standard 48 inches, um, and now, I mean, this USTA has um, basically governed, it's a six inch cracker, which has changed a little bit from before, I mean, um, you know, a lot of times. Yeah, I have like, here what it used to look like. It's a foot long compared to what you have to have yeah. now. When you get it in the store, I mean, this is what it looks like. Uh, so now, you know, we just have to cut it down and basically just what the USDA has governed us to do. And there are changes when you can whip during the race and when you can't. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, every jurisdiction is different. Uh, here at Chester, we are not allowed to one hand until the head of the stretch. And, you know, at that point, um, you know, I mean, you only have to hit them a few times. I mean, most of the guys here, you know, are very, um, you know, they use the, the whip in a, um, not an, an awful manner at all. I mean, horses are, are sometimes like people. I mean, there's some that need a little bit more encouragement than others. And, I, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people that need more encouragement than others. So that's kind of where we, where we let that go there. Well, you mentioned one hand. Explain what you mean by one hand. Yeah, I mean, one hand would be... Uh, you know, I mean, most of the race you have both hands in your hand holds, and then you can kind of let the, you know, put it both of them into your left hand and hit them like that. So, um, you know, I mean, most of the time we, you, a lot of the guys here, you don't even really see them do that. I mean, they'll keep both hands on the lines, kind of give them some taps, hit the wheel disc, you know, something like that. Um, but occasionally there is one, you know, like I said, that just needs that little extra push, like, come on, buddy, you know, like, get up. So. Okay, thanks, Corey. I'm Sonny, the paddock judge. Back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Sonny. We're going to go to break. When we come back, you'll want to hang around because we're going to have more from Harris Chester, and we're going to go up to Pocono Downs for their great racing they had up there last week. Okay.